The evening darkness had enveloped the city, and the streets were sinking into silence one by one. Elizabeth stepped off the bus that had just pulled up to the stop and put her phone to her ear. The voice on the other end belonged to her sister, Alice. Alice answered, Where have you been? Her tone was lightly reproachful. The food's getting cold. Elizabeth sighed. What's the microwave for? She replied, sounding tired. This is what happens when you invite me for dinner after work. Alice laughed. Oh, by the way, the building's buzzer isn't working. Call me when you're here. Luckily, the automatic door opener still works. Perfect, Elizabeth muttered. All right, I'm almost there. Bye. She hung up the phone and continued walking, scanning her surroundings. A creepy silence pervaded the darkened street. When she reached the building, she took out her phone again and called Alice. As the phone rang, she looked up at the third-floor window and caught a glimpse of a shadow behind the curtain. A man? She wondered, looking more closely. The shadow moved, almost taking on the form of a woman. Her heart began to race, and she suddenly dropped her phone. Oh, God, what's going on here? She whispered, picking up the phone with trembling hands. She fixed her gaze on the window again, but the shadow had disappeared. Come on, pick up, Elizabeth mumbled under her breath. Finally, Alice answered, her voice surprisingly calm. Hold on, I'm coming to open the door. Elizabeth quickly asked, Alice, is there anyone else with you at home? No one, Alice replied in an even tone. I'm alone, just come to the door. Elizabeth stared up at the building, trying to steady her breathing as she stepped inside. The building's entrance was dark, but the automatic door opened and sensors lit up the area. The unease gripping her didn't ease up. She hurried to the elevator and pressed the button. Just then, the light suddenly went out. Elizabeth felt a shadow behind her and a cold shiver climbed up her spine. She waved her hand, trying to feel her way around, and the lights flickered back on. The shadow was gone. Oh my God, what was that? She whispered. As soon as the elevator doors opened, she rushed in and pressed the button for the third floor. Just before the doors closed, she heard footsteps echoing down the hallway, her heart pounding faster. She glimpsed another shadow moving just as the doors shut. She took a deep breath as the elevator ascended. Oh God, please help me. She muttered under her breath, her hands sweating. When she reached the third floor, the elevator doors opened, and Elizabeth stepped out quickly. Her sister Alice was waiting at the door, her brows slightly furrowed as she looked at Elizabeth with worried eyes. Alice leaned towards her sister. What happened? She asked softly. You look pale. Elizabeth took a deep breath, trying to steady her heartbeat. I think... I think something paranormal is happening, she said in a shaky voice. Are you really alone at home? Alice rolled her eyes and slowly nodded. Yes, Elizabeth, I'm alone. Are we going to talk out here, or are you coming in? Despite the lingering chill within her, Elizabeth stepped inside. As the door closed, a light breeze made the curtains flutter. Elizabeth's eyes involuntarily followed a shadow slipping past the mirror's edge, but she forced herself to stay calm. Dropping her bag by the mirror, she saw Alice heading towards the kitchen. Could you not make things even more tense? Alice called from the kitchen. I've had a stressful day at work, Elizabeth replied, sinking into the couch. I'm starving. Let's just eat. Alice popped her head out of the kitchen with a smile. Dinner's almost ready, sis. Elizabeth frowned, looking at her sister. Almost ready? I know you ordered everything in. Alice blinked and shrugged. Yeah, but getting the takeout set up is still a skill, isn't it? She grinned. Just as Elizabeth was about to reply, a rattling sound came from inside. Elizabeth jumped in her seat, her eyes darting towards the source of the noise. What was that? She whispered, her heart pounding in her chest. Alice turned to Elizabeth with visible unease. Calm down. It was probably just something that fell, she said, moving towards the kitchen. I'll go check. Want me to help? 
Elizabeth offered, trying to calm herself. Alice shook her head. No, no, relax, I'm not a kid anymore, she said, walking towards the hallway from where the sound had come. Once Alice was out of sight, an indescribable chill crept over Elizabeth. Her eyes wandered around the room, scanning the empty walls and dark corners of the rooms. Just then, she noticed a hand slowly rise up from behind the couch, inching closer to her hair, accompanied by another unsettling rattle. Elizabeth jumped up in alarm. Alice! She called out, her voice echoing in the silence, expecting to hear her sister's footsteps in the hallway. But there was no response. Damn it, Alice! She shouted, her steps quickening toward the hallway, her heart racing wildly. She stopped at the dark end of the hallway, where a faint light seeped out from under the door. But under that light, two shadows were merging and shifting. Holding her breath, Elizabeth called out, Alice, are you there? A voice echoed back from the hallway. I'm coming, Elizabeth. It was Alice's voice, but strangely echoed. Elizabeth turned and glanced behind her. Right in front of the living room door, there was an anomaly in the shadow on the wall. Was there another shadow behind her? She wanted to close her eyes in fear, but instead she steadied her breath and walked toward the door at the end of the hallway. She reached for the doorknob, hearing a faint rustling sound from within. She flung the door open to find Alice, standing there with a broom and a bucket. Alice looked at her sister with a puzzled expression. What are you doing here, Elizabeth? She asked. Elizabeth furrowed her brows and shook her head. Who was with you? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. Alice's puzzled look quickly turned into deep concern. Who? No one. Elizabeth? Alice's confused expression quickly morphed into deep concern. Who? There's no one else, Elizabeth. Elizabeth lowered her voice, saying, Please, tell me the truth. Alice took a deep breath, looking away as she spoke. Okay. Sam is here, she whispered. He wanted to talk to you, but I couldn't tell you. He insisted. Sam? Elizabeth repeated, her eyes widening. Sam? My ex-fiancé? You're kidding. He's here? Just then, the doorbell rang. Both sisters turned silently toward the door, the sound echoing through the quiet room. Alice nodded slowly. I think he might have stepped outside. Elizabeth's shadow on the wall began to drift in an unusual direction. Alice noticed the shadow shifting strangely, as if another set of eyes had joined it. Alice! Elizabeth's unease turned into overpowering fear. Open the door! Startled, Alice walked to the door and opened it with trembling hands. Standing on the other side was Sam, a faint smile on his face. Hello, Sam said. There was a strange coolness in his gaze as he added, I feel like I wasn't given the warmest welcome. Alice whispered to Sam nervously. Sam, you were supposed to wait inside, she said with concern. Why did you step out? Scratching his chin, Sam replied, I thought I'd wait in the building while you two chatted. By the way, I met your new neighbor. He paused, casting a slight smile to catch Elizabeth and Alice's attention. She reads palms and supposedly casts spells. Spells? Elizabeth repeated, staring at Sam. Alice clutched her sister's arm, squeezing gently. Maybe, maybe I should move in with you again, she whispered anxiously. Definitely. Elizabeth replied quickly. At that moment, a terrifying noise erupted from inside the apartment. Both Alice and Elizabeth screamed, their eyes fixed on the dark room beyond. A week passed. Alice had quietly moved into Elizabeth's home. Boxes, belongings, and suitcases were scattered everywhere, but in the back of their minds, both sisters were haunted by something else entirely. The tension from that night hadn't left them. As Elizabeth prepared coffee in the kitchen, Alice stood in the middle of the living room, staring at the stacked boxes. Although she was trying to adjust to the new setup, images of those dark shadows and the eerie memories of the hallway lingered in her mind. Elizabeth walked in with the coffee mugs, 
noticing the distant expression on Alice's face. Handing one mug to Alice, Elizabeth asked, Have you noticed how many cups of coffee we've had today? She smiled slightly. Alice took the coffee and nodded. I can't sleep, Elizabeth. I still don't feel safe here, she said softly. Being with you helps, but... Elizabeth looked down, taking a deep breath. I know, she murmured. That night, it was like everything was surreal. The shadows by the door, the sounds, Sam's strange behavior. I still can't believe it. Alice averted her gaze and took a sip from her mug. What's even stranger, she said pensively, is that we haven't heard anything about Sam since then. I can't reach him on his phone. Even his social media accounts seem to have disappeared. I mean, after all these years, for him to suddenly show up and vanish like this, it's not normal. Elizabeth took a deep breath, trying to quell the unease within her. Maybe... Maybe it's best he's gone, she whispered. Just then, a cold draft came in under the door, chilling the room. Both sisters looked at each other with a start. Elizabeth steadied herself and quickly went to the door, checking the lock, but everything appeared fine. As the sound of the door closing echoed, she returned inside. It's probably just the cold from outside, Elizabeth said, her voice trembling slightly. If we keep this up... We're going to get so paranoid. Alice glanced around nervously and sat down on one of the boxes. I don't think it's just an ordinary draft, she said in a low voice. It's like something from that night is still haunting us. Elizabeth paused at her sister's words. Looking at her, she could see that Alice shared the same fear. Come on, Elizabeth said softly. Let's unpack these boxes. Maybe it'll keep us busy and calm us down. Alice gave a faint smile and stood up. You're right. Maybe a little organizing will help. Together, they started going through the boxes and arranging their belongings. Although they appeared focused, their minds remained clouded with unanswered questions about that night. As Alice was organizing Elizabeth's bookshelf, she heard a faint rustling behind her. She paused for a moment but tried to ignore it. When she returned her focus to the shelves, a book suddenly slid off and fell to the floor. Elizabeth immediately came over to her side. They exchanged a quick glance, each seeing the lingering fear in the other. Alice took a deep breath and bent down to pick up the book. She was about to say something when a strange whisper echoed from the dark corner of the kitchen, freezing them both in place. Elizabeth's eyes widened with fear as she looked toward the kitchen her heart pounding. Alice, Elizabeth whispered, are you sure about this place? Alice's trembling hand reached out to touch Elizabeth's arm. Elizabeth, she whispered, her eyes filled with terror. It feels like, it feels like those shadows followed us here. At that moment, the kitchen light flickered and a dark shadow disrupted the stillness of the room. Both of their hearts pounded as whispers spread through the silence of the night. After a few days of unease, Elizabeth and Alice decided to go back to their old home and consult the neighbor who read fortunes. Both of them were plagued by the same question. What if the terrifying experiences they had were somehow connected to that fortune teller's actions? They walked slowly, passing through the darkened streets until they reached their old apartment, the building's exterior looked even colder and more ominous than the first day they had moved in. As they approached the apartment entrance, their hearts quickened and the tension rose. Alice extended her hand toward the door, only to pull it back. Elizabeth gave her an encouraging nod. Alice knocked on the door. After a few moments of silence, the door creaked open. Standing behind it was none other than Sam, who had disappeared a week earlier. He wore a faint smile, but his eyes were vacant and soulless. Hey, girls. Sam greeted them in a mocking tone, but his eyes were empty and cold. I knew you missed me. Alice took a step back, stunned by his appearance. Sam, are you okay? She asked in a low voice. 
Sam tilted his head to the side with a strange smile. I've never been better, he said, stepping aside to let them in. Elizabeth and Alice entered cautiously. The place smelled strange, like a blend of incense and the mustiness of old books. Once inside, they found themselves face to face with a mysterious woman standing behind Sam. She had long, wavy black hair, flawless features, and a black dress that seemed to command the room. Her eyes, a deep, fiery brown, exuded a profound wisdom. Alice took a few steps toward the woman, nodding with a puzzled expression. Honestly, we expected an old, hunched-over woman, she said, attempting a smile. It's surprising to see you looking so young and striking. The woman smiled slightly, her eyes scanning Alice. Her voice was soft and chilling. Appearances can be deceiving, dear, she said calmly. You don't need to be old and hunched to touch people's minds. Elizabeth took a deep breath and stepped forward. We... We can't find peace in the new house, she said, her voice trembling. After that night, we think the evil spirits followed us to our new home. We want to know how to get rid of them. Hearing this, the woman bowed her head slightly and narrowed her eyes deep in thought. Taking a deep breath, she stepped closer to the sisters. Getting rid of evil spirits isn't so easy, she said slowly, her voice echoing in the room. Elizabeth and Alice's eyes widened, and Alice's voice shook as she spoke. But you can help us, right? Isn't there a way? Without taking her eyes off them, the woman replied, I am bound to a world that people only see on the surface, she said. You wander along its borders, at the edge of shadows, but I live right within it. Elizabeth and Alice were frozen in place. The woman's eyes seemed to penetrate their very souls. She continued in an ominous tone. From that night onward, evil spirits have linked themselves to you. Summoning them is easy, but sending them away isn't always possible. These beings now feed off your energy. The more you fear, the stronger they grow. The more you worry, the more they will spread into every corner of your home. Elizabeth held her breath. So, she said in a low voice, does that mean we can't get rid of them? The woman's face broke into a sharp smile, as if she were sharing a frightening secret. Some things can't be overcome, she said darkly. These beings live within the shadows of the human soul, feeding off their darker sides. Getting rid of them would be like tearing away a piece of yourself. Alice's hands began to tremble as she tried to pull herself together. So, is there nothing we can do? No way? She asked, her voice almost pleading. Shaking her head slowly, the woman continued without breaking eye contact. Try to banish your fears, she whispered sinisterly. But remember, if these beings have entered your life, even if you forget them, they won't forget you. The blood drained from Alice and Elizabeth's faces as they averted their gazes from the woman's penetrating stare. It was as if, within her, there lay another world, dark, unreachable, governed by its own rules, and that world's chilling presence lingered within them.